The title of this video is The Crime of Fossil Fueled Death and Destruction from Global Climate Disruption. The uh, issue addressed is the imperative to protest this and the necessity defense for our common future survival. I'm Peter Carter. I'm an expert climate change presenter, IPCC reviewer. I'm not a lawyer, but I have a background in environmental health protection policy, and I'm co-author of a book on unprecedented crime, that of climate science denial. I'm making the video in August 2018, and I'm the director of the Climate Emergency Institute. On the 15th of May in 2018, a historic statement was made on global climate change. Uh, what you see here is a news release from UN News with the headline, Climate Change, an Existential Threat to Humanity, UN Chief Warns Global Summit. And at this world conference, this Austrian world conference, the uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres stated that climate change is quite simply an existential threat for most life on the planet, including and especially the life of humankind. From the well-known science, it is clear, certainly to the protesters by their statements, that Earth is being rapidly destroyed before our very eyes by atmospheric greenhouse gas pollution, which is primarily carbon dioxide CO2 emissions which come mainly from the burning of fossil fuels. I'm going to start here by looking at what is common climate change knowledge, and then I'll follow with some of the uh, most essential data which confirms this knowledge. So the following aspects of global climate change are well known from frequent media reports and climate change reports over many, many years and from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC assessments. We know that increasing atmospheric CO2 is resulting from continued constant CO2 emissions, which is causing most of the rapidly increasing global warming. We know also that increasing atmospheric CO2 is causing all of the rapidly increasing ocean acidification. Most CO2 emissions are from burning fossil fuels for energy. All the energy from fossil fuels can be replaced by today's available clean renewable energy sources. That's pretty obvious from all the dramatic progress that has been made on these technologies. And it is also a statement from uh, a recent IPCC report just a few years ago on renewable energy. It is common sense that increasing global surface warming causes increasing heat waves, forest fires, droughts, and sea level rise. It is recorded in fact and well known that global warming is causing increases of extreme weather events with disastrous impacts to human populations on all continents and to their food production, such as more heat waves forest fires, droughts, severe storms, torrential rains, floods, more powerful hurricanes and cyclones, and more sea level rise. Food security. It is well known that agriculture depends totally on a suitably stable climate and suitable limits to extreme weather events like heat waves and drought. More fossil fuel extraction and more fossil fuel distribution will obviously keep all of the above deadly effects increasing and even faster, which will condemn billions to terrible suffering and death and threaten the future of the human race. So now as confirmation, we're just going to look at two data sets, atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration and global warming. It's really impossible not to be aware that atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration is increasing, has been increasing for a long time, nor to be unaware that global warming is increasing, and that has been increasing for a long time. 
Uh, this perhaps is the most important of all the records that have been uh, gathered by the research science. This shows atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration. And it shows that atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration is accelerating from 1740, where the record starts, to July 2018. The uh, seasonally adjusted mean atmospheric CO2 concentration that this graph shows has now reached 408 parts per million of air. The record is by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, published in August of 2018. So here's the atmospheric CO2 concentration. The pre-industrial concentration was down here at around 280 parts per million. The uh, limit of atmospheric CO2 concentration over the past 800,000 year ice core record is 300. And now the world is at 408 parts per million. A lot of publicity has been given to the uh, extreme record temperature, global temperature increases of the past few years, so everybody uh, should be well aware of that by now. The global warming of the last year of record, 2017. Global warming is the global average land ocean surface temperature increase. The WMO reported that for the year 2017, global mean temperatures were 0.46 degrees C above the 1981 to 2010 average, which is the average uh, used mostly by the scientists, and that, the WMO says, is about 1.1 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, and that's the uh, level that is relied on uh, for setting targets and uh, policies and calculating uh, what emissions should be. This graph of temperature increase, so-called temperature anomaly, is from NASA GISS, and it shows the 1.1 degree C increase in 2017. This graph shows the global warming trend from 1880 through 2017, and you can see that it has accelerated from 1880 to 2017. The trend is uh, calculated by a statistical method called lowest smoothing, and uh, this is over 20 years, which is a definite trend. This map is from NASA GISS also. This shows the global warming of the land alone, and NASA puts this at 1.52 degrees C, from pre-industrial and you can clearly see that the northern hemisphere is warming faster than the southern hemisphere and the global average. This is a, a graph of the northern hemisphere warming trend. I uh, stress the northern hemisphere results because although it's been very well known for very many years that the uh, tropical and subtropical low latitude regions, those populations most vulnerable, would be hit hardest and earliest by global climate disruption. We now know from uh, disastrous experiences that the northern hemisphere is extremely vulnerable to global climate change because the northern hemisphere is warming up much faster than the southern hemisphere or the global average. And that's what this NASA GISS plot shows this is the uh, land ocean northern hemisphere mean. So this is the global land ocean average just for the northern hemisphere. And this is much higher than 1.1 degrees C. It's 1.35 degrees C. I think we're all pretty well aware that maximum temperatures are getting higher and we're having more heat waves. This is uh, just to confirm this from a 2013 WMO report called A Decade of Extremes, 2001 to 2010. And these show the highest maximum temperatures by decade. And you can see these higher maximum temperatures are increasing, and again, at an accelerating rate. 
So what are governments doing in the face of these uh, clearly planetary catastrophic trends? Well, they're doing worse than nothing. The only plan is to increase global emissions more, that's global carbon dioxide emissions, and national emissions targets lead to a substantially higher level of global emissions by 2030, and at that time emissions will still be increasing. We know this from the UN record, the governments of the world report what they call their INDCs, their Intended Nationally Determined Contributions, which is their national emissions targets, they report to the UN Climate Secretariat. And the result is substantially higher emissions. Uh, governments are doing much worse than nothing because of Earth destroying fossil fuel subsidies. Governments have increased fossil fuel subsidies to trillions of dollars a year, and that's the assessment by the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. However the subsidies are estimated, they have been increased very considerably over the past recent years. There is no constraint economic, legal, or regulatory that has been applied to fossil fuel production and distribution. There is no discussion amongst governments of a global carbon fee. So this graph here, this is of uh, CO2 emissions, and this is from the UN Climate Secretariat, a document called Update of INDCs, these combined global emissions targets. It was published on the 2nd of May 2016 and this did show a huge increase in global emissions of 16 percent by 2030 and this is shown by this orange arrow here and you can see by 2030 the uh, emissions, global emissions are still increasing. All of the authoritative sources have uh, agreed on this projection and they have uh, projected that this means a 3.2 degrees C global warming by 2100 and that is absolute total planetary catastrophe. To limit global warming all of these authoritative sources agree that to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees C which is now the target or 2 degrees C which was the old target, but only by 2100, global emissions would be declining now. So this shows the uh, other uh, content of that graph from the UN Climate Secretariat of May 2016. And uh, this highlights the global emissions decline required for a 2 degree C warming by 2100 and a 1.5 degree C warming by 2100. And as you can see, they would be, should be declining now. Footnote 4 is the immediate onset mitigation, which only has a greater than 66% likelihood of staying below 2 degrees C only, and that's only by 2100. So absolutely, to avoid total planetary catastrophe and a chance at our future survival, our common future survival as I call it because it's uh, most of life and most of species, um, emissions, global emissions have to be declining now by 2020 at the very, very latest. So it's clear from this uh, most basic uh, observations, most basic science, and also common sense, that fossil fuel protesters are in the right, and the governments uh, that are charging them with uh, crimes are in the wrong. Fossil fuel protesters are acting in the regional, national, and world interests as they are required to do as responsible citizens. Governments, on the other hand, are perpetrating the unprecedented crime of all time. Clearly, under all self-evident uh, standards and traditions and long-standing laws of civilization. In particular, this is a continued crime 
against the indigenous peoples and First Nations, as we call them in Canada, of the world. Because this is the destruction of uh, Mother Earth. This is the killing of the Great Mother. Our book, Unprecedented Crime, shows that allowing the continued increase in fossil fuel extraction and distribution by uh, misleading the public, which is um, occurring, of course, by the uh, dangerous climate change denial campaign, but is also um, coming from our governments, very obviously, this, we show, is the worst ever crime against humanity. In my opinion, it's hard to put words on how terrible this crime is, uh, perhaps the multiple of all evils. I would note, finally, that Pope Francis has declared that changing the climate of planet Earth is a sin against God.